Hi, good morning. I'd like to welcome you to Palm Praise 2. I do thank you for tuning in and peace and blessings be upon you and your family this morning. Now we are going to get right back into No Man Can I Hinder Me. Right now we're on chapter 7, which is entitled My Roots. And it goes as such. I was protected from Tarzan me nation. Tarzan nation. There we go. By stories of my African family learned at the knee of my maternal great grandmother, Mary Diane Thomas. Mrs. Thomas, who resided two doors down the street with my grandmother, Mary Russell, lived until I was 13 years old and never tired of telling me of our Nigerian ancestry. She was the granddaughter of Nzinga and Kujo Mawali, who lived in Bina City, Nigeria, in the early 1800s. Benin was a beautiful city of universities, porched homes, paved streets, quant shops, and indoor plumbing. Great, great, great grandfather, Kujo, who was a lawyer and a sculptor, was infuriated because British soldiers continually came to the city and stole art treasures, including sculptures from the Benin Cultural Centers. Cujo and Nzinga often argued over Cujo's vow to fight the soldiers on their next plundering visit. Nzinga's anxiety was heightened by the fact she was pregnant and she feared her husband might be killed. Despite her pleas, uh, Cujo railed his fellow sculptors and sadly was killed fighting British soldiers. 1813. Great, great, great grandmother Nzinga was captured with 247 Africans as prisoner of war and marched, chained neck to neck many miles to a Ghana port. There they were boarded on an American so-called slave ship bound for Charleston, South Carolina, en route to America. The vessel was captured by an uh, abolitionist ship, which was enforcing a United States law of 1808 prohibiting importation of additional Africans. U.S. shipping companies ignored the law because the illegal trafficking of Americans had become an incredible source of income. Mm. The commandeered captive ship was rerouted to the port of Trenton, New Jersey. All of the captured Africans were adopted by various abolitionist families. Great, great, great grandmother Nzinga had given birth aboard ship to a girl she named Diane, who was my great, great grandmother. Mother and child were adopted by an abolitionist couple with the family name of Stewart. Since African families were not separated in the North, as was the practice by Southern captors. Nzinga was able to pass on the stories of Benin City to great great grandmother Diane, and the stories, and the stories, excuse me, finally made their way to my eager ears on Edwin Street from great grandmother Mary Diane. Thus. I was protected from the Tarzan lies and other insidious attempts to make us all believe African jungle stories. Incidentally, there was a tour, 1980, a Nigerian sculpture, 
presented at the Art Museum in Philadelphia, which is a short walk from Edwin Street. It would not surprise me if some of my great, great, great grandfather's work is finally being enjoyed around the world. Discovering that I came from African greatness excited me. On the preceding pages are pictures of my ancestors, which along with the illustrations of Songhai motivated me through the years to share them with the world. And this does complete chapter seven. Certainly, if you would like to see the pictures that um, Edward Robinson is talking about, uh, certainly tune in to the previous chapters where there are pictures that I do show you that are here in this book right here. So I want you and your family to be blessed. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Stay tuned for chapter eight of No Man Can Hinder Me. Now the title of chapter 8 is My First Sit-In. So with that it be it thy will I will speak with you soon here on Palm Praise 2. So until next time later y'all.